I'm here to help you decide whether you should learn Python or R or maybe even both. I didn't say neither because I assume you're here because you've already decided that you need to learn at least one of them. First of all, let me just start by saying that Python is not better than R and R is not better than Python. It all depends on your personal preference and what you use the tool for and to be honest, what your company and your colleagues use. You could be a world-class Python coder, but if everyone around you is using only R, then your Python skills are of no use as you cannot collaborate. Right? I actually prepared some slides for today's video, so let me give you a brief history of Python and R first. And don't worry, I'll make it really short and educational. Python was created by Guido van Rossum and was first released in 1991. And let me share a fun fact here. Python was not named after the snake. The name comes from, believe it or not, an old BBC TV comedy sketch series called Monty Python's Flying Circus. I bet you didn't know that, huh? Huh? R was created in 9192 by University of Auckland statisticians Ross Ihaka and Robert Gentleman. It was first announced to the public in 1993, so very much along the Python timelines, but the first stable version, R 1.0.0, was released much later in 2000. Python is a general purpose object oriented programming language. It can be and is used for almost anything you can imagine. It may not be the best thing for every single thing it can do, but it can do almost anything. It's very generic, very broad, and it's one of the most popular programming languages out there. Python has some libraries that are great for data analysis and data visualization, like NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib, and Seaborn, but nowhere near as many as R. If you code in Python, you'll more than likely use a Jupyter Notebook within your chosen Integrated Development Environment, or IDE, which in my case is Visual Studio Code. R, though, is a programming language which is optimized for statistical analysis and data visualization. A lot more niche than Python. There are thousands of packages available through the comprehensive R archive network, and they can all be used for deep analytical tasks. R has so many libraries for cleaning data, manipulating data, transforming data and creating visualizations, and is commonly used with RStudio, which is an IDE for simplified statistical analysis, visualization, and reporting. Both Python and R are open source and are supported by large communities who continuously extend the existing libraries and tools. The biggest difference between Python and R is how they're used. Python is a more general programming language, whereas R is mainly used for statistical analysis and data visualization. If you're serious about boosting your coding skills, I can't recommend DataCamp enough. I've been using that platform for years to level up my own skills. Their data analyst in Python and data analyst in R tracks are the most interactive and hands-on courses I found. With the Python track, you'll learn to analyze and visualize data from scratch using powerful libraries like pandas, numpy, matplotlib, and seaborn. With the R track, you'll master data cleaning, manipulation, and visualization with dplyr, ggplot2, and tidyverse, all with practical exercises and business case studies. What I love most is how each track walks you from the basics all the way to advanced data analysis techniques through interactive exercises and real-world datasets. By the time you complete these tracks, you will have a portfolio of projects demonstrating your ability to solve actual business problems using Python or R. Both tracks fully prepare you for DataCamp's industry-recognized data analyst certification, which looks fantastic on LinkedIn and resumes. If you want to stand out in front of hiring managers and gain confidence in Python or R, check out my links in the description below and start learning today. And a big thanks to DataCamp for sponsoring this video. And now let me move on to some simple example syntax so you can decide for yourself which one is easier to learn, which one is easier to read, and which one is easier to write. I have some sample code here that reads in a CSV file in both languages and then some code that handles the missing values. Feel free to pause the video so you can have a more detailed look. And I have some more code here that replaces the numeric values with the mean and the median and the categorical values with the mode. Again, feel free to pause the video to have a more detailed look. 
Maybe I just have familiarity bias because I use Python more, but to me, it is the language that is easier to read, easier to learn, easier to write. The code just looks simpler, cleaner, neater, and just reads more like English. But my opinion is clearly not the gospel, so what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And now, the pros and cons of each programming language. Let me start with Python to keep the video format consistent. It is open source, but like I mentioned before, so is R. Python's syntax is clean and readable, with many language elements closely resembling English. In my opinion, it's easy to learn because it's easy to read. It is a multi-purpose programming language, making it adaptable across diverse domains such as web development, software development, automation, artificial intelligence, and more. This versatility allows you to do more than just statistical computing. You could use the pandas and numpy libraries for data analysis, the tensorflow and scikit-learn libraries for machine learning, and Django and Flask libraries for web development in the same project using the same language. And I know this is a data analysis channel, but seamlessly integrating across domains always comes in handy. Python's ease of use and powerful libraries make it ideal for rapid prototyping and deploying scalable solutions, which is why it's used so much in machine learning, big data fields, and AI, some pretty popular areas, especially of recent times. And now, the cons. The processing speed can be slow, especially depending on what library or package you're using, but to be honest, this can also be the case with R at times as well. Python certainly uses quite a bit of memory, which can reduce speed. It also has fewer specialized packages for advanced statistical analysis compared to R, and the visualizations are also not as detailed, customizable, and appealing as in R. So, when it comes to purely statistical analysis and data visualization, it is not as good as R. And now, let me cover the pros of using R. It's also open source, and given it's a programming language specifically designed for statistical analysis and data visualization, it is no surprise that it excels at these. You have thousands of niche libraries to choose from to perform statistical tasks, data analysis, data cleaning, data wrangling, or data visualization. R is outstanding when it comes to these use cases when compared to Python. But as far as I am concerned, this is where the advantages of R stop. Outside of statistical tasks, it is less flexible than Python. The learning curve, in my opinion, is also much steeper compared with Python. And again, this is just my opinion, which is not the gospel. So if you don't agree, leave a comment below. Or if you do agree, you can leave one too. So my final answer to you is this, when it comes to the question of Python or R for data analysis. It depends. I cannot give you a straightforward answer here because it depends on you, your use, and most importantly, what your company or the company you want to work for uses. If you're after doing only hardcore statistical analysis and data visualization, then R is the right choice. In every other scenario, Python is probably the better choice. I hope you found this video helpful. In case you did, feel free to like and subscribe for more content like this. And in case you're struggling with learning real life data skills and want some help by learning through real world data projects across domains like finance, healthcare, or marketing, then you should definitely check out everything on my website at mochan.info. The link is in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and I shall see you in the next one.